Hi, George. George. He is busy at the moment. What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun, and welcome to the third vlog of 2020. I figured I'm cooking. I might as well vlog it, considering I don't have many vlogs on my channel as of yet. I am making an impossible pie, also known as a quiche, for my breakfast, so that basically I don't have to make breakfast every day while I'm at work. Uh, and I'm making a rather simple one. Uh, a quiche is basically a heartier omelette. It's an omelette that has structure to it. So what we are doing here is this is just a third of a cup of pancake mix. This is Aunt Jemima. This box is empty now. Um, a pound of chopped frozen spinach, a pound of cream cheese, and then we're going to add eggs and some ham to it. And I'll put it in the 9 by 13 dish at 350 degrees, of which the oven is already preheated. I already put garlic and black pepper in there, and I've also added some Louisiana crispy batter because that will add a lot more Cajun flavor to it, and it'll also... What's wrong? What do you want, Fred? And, uh... It'll make it taste better, and I'm also going to sprinkle some on top. That is a cornmeal-based batter mix. That one's made specifically for fish fries, but you can use it for a lot of things. Now my question is, how do I set this camera down so I can mix this? Or can I mix this with one hand? Huh. So I'm just going to... That's not an ingredient, that's just my iced coffee. Um, can I put you down face up? so that you can see me adding stuff. Spinach in. You want it about the consistency of a, uh, like a normal omelet. It, it might be a little thicker because of the pancake batter, but you want it around the similar consistency because if you put too much pancake mix or fry mix into your quiche or impossible pie, that's what we call it in the Midwest, it's it's gonna turn out more like cornbread than omelet, which is not the best thing in the world. Sorry, I kind of can't do this one-handed very well. I also gotta make sure that the power button on my phone is on the top because otherwise I am not going to be able to do this very well. Well, basically, we'll end up with an upside-down recording like we did when we were at the store. So, as you can see now, it's forming like a shaggy bread dough, which is what we want with the spinach and the cream cheese. And this is basically the simplest version of this that I make. Now, you can add stuff like shredded cheese and stuff to this. I'm I, Since mine has spinach and cream cheese in it, I'm obviously not adding more shredded cheese to it. So see, now we have like a shaggy bread dough. You can see it's not sticking to my hand much. Okay, and now we're going to put some diced ham that I have from, I just set you face down on the counter, didn't I? That I have from my local Quick Trip. The finest establishment in the entirety of the Midwest. Oh, here you go. I can prop you on the uh, 9 by 13 pan. You guys can see the mixing bowl, right? Yeah, you can. Okay. And now, I'm essentially just going to add eggs until it reaches a point at which it is the consistency that we want. Whoops. Dropped the entire egg in there, but it didn't break, so it's okay. That's two eggs. That's not going to be enough, but I want to mix it so that it's homogenous. We don't want random scraps of batter in there that's not, uh, you know, incorporated. And normally I would add, like, parsley and stuff for both flavor and color to an impossible pie. But in this case, uh, the spinach is going to provide all the color and uh, flavor that we need. If you hear a scratching sound, that is my cat. Okay, 
And we are trying to fill a 9 by 13 pan. Oh, and I put a baking... I usually put a little bit of baking powder in mine so that they rise a little bit. It may sound a little rough, but that's because I'm mixing it with a fork and not a, uh, what do you call it, a spatula or a whisk because this is too dense right now for that to happen. Also, the spinach is still a little bit frozen, which is kind of surprising. I I unthawed that in water and then microwaved it for, thir for three minutes, and the spinach was still partially frozen in the middle. So that's six eggs. This is going to be a decent sized impossible pie, so you can reduce the quantity of it if you so choose. And it is okay if you whisk it rather vigorously because that's just going to incorporate the eggs better and it might actually add volume to it because we are going to basically aerate the eggs while we're mixing it. Now you're not going for full-on meringue here, you just want to put some air into it so it's not as dense. Whoops, we almost got a piece of shell in there. What seems to be the problem, George? I literally just fed you, just now. What are you complaining about? Do you scream because you do not know? Now this is probably going to be a two-part vlog because uh, I don't have enough recording space to record just the time of this cooking, which is probably going to be around 15 to 20 minutes. I've already oiled the pan, the oven's already preheated. Okay, that's getting very close to the correct consistency. As you can probably hear, it's a lot more aerated now. So I'm guessing eight eggs is going to be correct for this amount of batter. That should nicely fill our uh, thing. And then basically once it's cooked, you can cut it into squares and then refrigerate it, and then you just take out one and heat it up whenever you want, and then you have basically ready-made breakfast whenever you want. What seems to be the problem, oh small one? And I haven't added any milk or dairy to this other than the cream cheese, because obviously the cream cheese is going to be a lot of that. What seems to be the problem? You're meowing an awful lot. Okay, as you can probably see, we have the correct consistency now. As you can see, the only lumps in it are ham. There's no flour lumps in it. It's the consistency of like a thick omelet batter. And it's lighter because it's aerated from us mixing it. So now I'm just going to, thankfully this mixing bowl has a pour thing on it. I actually didn't have a mixing bowl until a couple uh, months ago, and we're just going to basically evenly spread this. I'm going to have to set you guys down so I can do this. Come on, get all of this lovely egg batter in there. should fill it nicely. Now, this next step, you guys are probably going to want to skip if I can find it wherever it is. Here it is. So, the next step is probably something for me and me alone. So, okay, you see we have a correct amount in there. Well, the, the, the encrusting the top of it with breadcrumbs is not the part that's going to be weird, but see if I can prop you up again against this now. Congratulations, you are now on my iced coffee. This is Dragon's Breath. What is Dragon's Breath? It is a seasoning blend that it includes, but is not limited to, ghost peppers and Carolina Reapers. So this is pretty much the hottest seasoning you can get your hands on. And I'm just going to lightly drizzle some of it on top of here. Nice light coating. 
so that we get some spiciness throughout it. Hey, I guess you guys can actually just, if you don't like spicy, you can just do this with like smoked paprika and it would add a nice flavor to it because this does have smoked paprika in it. And then we're going to take a small amount of our Louisiana fry mix. So I have two fry mixes that I eat, normally use. This is Zatarans and this is a Louisiana. The Louisiana has more spice to it, so I am going to use that. It's more like the Louisiana hot sauce. We're just going to make a nice crust. You see, we want the batter thick enough that it can hold this crust on top of it, but thin enough that it's not going to uh, become too dense when we cook it, because this will also expand when we cook it, too. And there should be just a small amount of oil around the edges of the pan that you can see, so that you know it's not going to stick when it expands. And what you can also do is take a baking sheet, a baking sheet, a baking sheet like this, and stick that on the oven rack underneath this, so that if it any of the egg spills over when it rises, that we don't end up with any, uh, you know, spillage in the oven. And there we go. It's in the oven at 350 for like, let's go. 15 to 20, so we'll go for like 17 minutes. And that is that. The next thing I am going to do is I'm going to prepare my lunches for the time that I am working so that I don't have to, you know, screw around with making lunch or dinner on a day that I'm working. As you can see, I have quite a bit of stuff in my fridge. That is actually a bottle of homemade mead down there. Maybe I'll say something about that in a different video. But what I'm going to get to right now is, if I can prop you guys up over here, I might need my iced coffee again, because this cutting board is not very tall. Okay, dump out the water that I thawed the spinach and stuff in. And set that over here so it can dry. What we are doing right here is we are making meat so that I can make sandwiches very easily. Now, around Thanksgiving, I got my hands on some pretty cheap whole bone-in turkey breasts. And those are very good for making sandwiches out of. Now, it has, they did a study. Can you hear me over the water pouring? Whoa, we almost lost it. <laughs> they did a study over uh, the best way to prepare a turkey. And the official best way to prepare your turkey is to uh, brine it in a sugar and salt water solution for 48 hours, which this one has done. And then you're gonna dry rub and season it. I actually keep a uh, plastic storage tote that I use specifically for marinating meat. So now that this has been uh, brined for 48 hours, I had to unthaw it for a week because obviously it's an eight pound turkey breast. It takes a while to unthaw. And it's already been washed and brined, so we don't need to worry about any of that. So what I'm going to do is transfer this from this to the marinating container. And then we can wash this at our leisure. And see it's still got some salt and sugar in it that didn't fully dissolve. But so we don't want to put any salt on this turkey at all because this has been brined. See, I for I also prefer wet brining to dry brining stuff because if we dry brine this, we would have to wash the entire turkey again just to get the excess salt off of it. Because the salt will absorb into the meat. Okay. And we'll do a fairly reasonable standard seasoning on this. I don't want to go too crazy because we're using this for sandwiches, so we want it to be fairly malleable. We want it to be something you can put different seasonings and stuff on. So I'm just going to coat this in a bit of garlic powder. I 
I have hot sauce in the fridge, so I'm not going to add any of the Dragon's Breath seasoning to it. just want to make sure every nook and cranny of this has stuff on it. Then we're going to do some black pepper. It already, remember, it already has salt on it, so we don't need more salt. But we do need some pepper on it. This is actually a pretty hefty turkey breast. Like, it has a lot of... Uh, um, meat on it and we also want to make sure we're getting nice and inside the cavity itself now this has part of the spine in it which is actually very good because when we cut these bones out of it we can then use this turkey bones to make stock and then we can make turkey soup so those both of those and I'm also going to add a little bit of I got this seasoning at Walmart a while ago it's uh, called the usual it's for it's a marinating meat blend it's salt coarse black pepper rosemary garlic lemon and cayenne pepper so you know fairly standard so we're basically going to ma be making like a mesquite smoked turkey breast sandwich meat that we can obviously make a very large quantity of sandwiches out of and obviously you can freeze this a lot of a lot of frozen stuff is happening now with the whole uh everything that's going on people needing to stock up on stuff Although they don't need to be stocking up quite as much as they have been. I'm just going to make sure that all of this is evenly coated. And normally I do like to marinate my meat in a little bit of uh, soy sauce because that helps with some umami flavor. But I'm not going to do that because of how much salt is on this. Instead, I'm going to dig through my fridge until I find it. You guys might have seen some of it with... Uh, when I was looking into the fridge earlier, but this is some homemade kimchi, which is basically a spicy fermented cabbage. It's very popular among certain Asian cultures and countries. I'm gonna add a little bit of this fermented juice to it, and that is also going to help keep the turkey moist and tender. It's okay if a little bit of cabbage gets on there, that's not gonna hurt anything. goes all the cans of alcohol okay and uh that's pretty much going to be it for the first part of the vlog and when i come back the turkey shall have been marinated for long enough and the impossible pie should be done because it's only got like 10 minutes left on it so i will see you guys in the second part of the vlog good day